a lot of states people bring up this thing of like, well, what if you change your mind? And you, what if you, you know, let's say it's someone who's taking testosterone. And they're like, well, what if you wanted to stop taking testosterone and you wanted to detransition de or something? And it's like, then they do that. that yeah. That's not a bad thing. All right, Miles, Hello. he's here. How's it going? <laughs> good, how are you? I'm so good. Hello, the child. <laughs> the kid. Yep. Hello. In the title, this is the kid. Yep. Yes. We're so excited for you to be here. Um, I know we've been following each other online yeah, for I mean, forever. I've been following you for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Um, I think Arlo was like really little when. I think yeah. I was like a baby, right? <laughs> you were like, yeah, you were like a, a tiny, tiny human. But no, I was. I started following you guys when I was a teenager, living like still like in my parents' house, and That's like it's gonna sound so cheesy, but like I'm being like so dead ass right now, <laughs> where it's like you guys gave me hope for my future. Aww. It was like by seeing you guys like. <laughs> Just be yourselves, which is like literally being yourselves and being happy. Like those two things I thought were like mutually exclusive options when right, I was a kid. It was right. like, I have to pick one. If I'm going to be myself, I can't be happy. If right. I'm happy, there's no way I could be myself. Like everyone's totally. real mad about that. So right. yeah, seeing you guys just like living life, I was like, okay, maybe I can do that too. That's so amazing. And I mean, so much love for both of you. We love that. And we love you so much. Um, I've been like keeping up with the, your content and the kind of stuff you put out. And I love your energy and I love the vibe of everything you're trying to like put out there for young kids that really look up to you and like that's why you know we started doing what we were doing when you were probably in high school was because yeah. I remember feeling like that young kid and literally not having one person in media and social media didn't even exist yet to to like look at and be like okay things are going to be okay so when things did end up okay for me I was like I got to do that for yeah. those young kids so yeah, no, I mean, it's the same thing. And like, you know, I like envy your generation so much Aww. because you guys have the algorithm. Like, back in our day with the internet, mm -hmm. you have to like search for yeah. this bullshit. Which also like, how do you know what to search if like you don't even know it's a real thing? Yeah, like, like deep yeah. on Reddit and stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like I just always felt different, but I didn't know like you could define that. And I didn't right. know the reasons, like the ways that I felt you know, so uncomfortable was like in a queer and trans sense. And so right. trying to garner that language when like, you know, you're living these identities that people try to make it so you can't see it. Totally, you know? totally. Um, and then the moment you have that language, it's like, it's a whole different thing. 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 So for those of you who don't know, this is our first ever podcast and it's called Interview With My Kid, where I'm gonna do interviews with amazing guests like Miles and my kid. Yep, and I'm Arlo, the kid. <laughs> And basically each week, we're gonna have a new guest on. It's gonna be all LGBTQ topics and we're gonna really delve into some of the topics and some of the, the things that a lot of people we feel haven't. This whole concept was basically, you know, inspired by real conversations between me and Arlo late at night. Yeah. So between a trans dad and my Gen Z kid and we just really wanted to bring other people on and have them also kind of delve into these different topics and discussions. So Arlo, what is our topic for today? What does it mean to be trans? Amazing, and we wanted to bring Miles on because Miles is, if you don't already know, a trans activist, musician, actor, you have your own book out. Is there anything else? <laughs> I was gonna say musician. <laughs> musician. I'm a musician? I mean, I saw you play. I, I, I've written one song. I made okay. one song that okay. I saw a musician make, but I do a, I do a many a things, okay. and I do know what it means to be trans for me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're perfect for this. Miles, I'm so glad you're here. You just came in with the best energy. Um, me and Arlo are so excited to have you here just because we know we've both kind of been following each other for forever and watching each other's content, content and online presence. <laughs> yeah, and we're matching right And now, we're too. matching, so look like, at us. And like, that was yeah. a complete accident. I know, for anyone crazy. who's like not watching this visually, like I literally am like, like a combination of these two. Yeah, yeah. it's so funny, <laughs> it's like, like right yeah. in the middle. Um, I actually was like hoping to see you this, because Pride was just this last weekend. Did, did know, you go? every day is Pride for us. Right? I know, it's true. At this point, I mean. Like, I know, but Christina Aguilera. <laughs> yeah, I know, was she there? Yeah, I, she, no, she I performed. Thing. I like, oh, yeah. live in WeHo, I feel like you dropped my address to come yeah. through. Um, I live in West Hollywood and I was sick the like weekend it was happening. Uh, so I, all okay. I heard was like, tss, 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 oh, and I'm like, yeah, that yeah, sounds yeah. like yeah. fun, but <laughs> I cannot be there. Oh man. It wasn't COVID, it hasn't, that has never touched me, knock on wood. But wow, just, that's amazing. The entire pandemic? The entire pandemic that's crazy me. god just you, loves you yeah literally <laughs> <laughs> you're trans god loves you if you made you trans and you never got covid <laughs> right if, if, I, if i did you just you catch these hands yeah happen, so thank you so much for being here of course mm -hmm. and we know your pronouns are he they mm -hmm. which do you prefer he 
Awesome. Yeah. Cool. It's funny. It's funny too. Like I, you know, I think one of the uh, questions in the brief was like, yeah, like why also they? Mm -hmm. And I think for me, you know, I'm very binary. And I'm a guy, and I'm also transgender. And with that, even though I've had a binary experience, I also think there's so much gray area when it comes to transitioning. It's not yeah. so black and white, and there's so many nuances. Definitely. And so it's like, I'm a guy, and my pronouns are he, him, but also I have a trans experience. So also, right. kind of like, you know, F gender. I'm yeah. like, you know, <laughs> yeah. so I'm also, they is also right. very affirming to me because it's like, I don't feel shame i feel very empowered by my journey right and like all the different people that i've been and like all the routes it had to take to get to where i am today so they i think it's totally. very encompassing of like being transgender for me so. right exactly. I, I i i completely yeah. get that i think arlo does too and sure. you know pronouns are going to be a big part of all of our episodes but mm -hmm. since this episode is you know what it means to be trans i think pronouns are such an important part yeah. of that and i think that's actually something a lot of people don't understand so i'm so glad you said that right off the bat because i think people think when you transition that it's just because you want to be you know seen as like a cis boy or a cis girl yeah, no. and you know when you've had that trans experience like you're saying there's a part of you that's super attached to that because of where what you had to go through to get where you are now yeah exactly i mean i feel like there's so much out there within like queer and trans media where it's very like cis versus trans and yeah. like gay versus straight where it's really like I can talk about my trans experience and it can relate to everyone because mm -hmm. everyone gets up in the morning and they get dressed right everyone wants to look in the mirror and see themselves and they want to hold the hand of someone that like they love mm -hmm. like that is a human experience it's right. not like just a queer trans one so. no totally like one of the something I always say in, in a lot of interviews and Arlo has heard this is like that trans people are more like you than they're not and wow, I yeah. think I think that like the like society and especially like you know lawmakers and people that really hate trans people are trying to show that divide and make us seem so different but like right. you said so much of our experiences are just human experiences yeah. you know I've like identified with so many people about like dressing and how that makes them feel and I've talked to cis people that were like if I like literally couldn't dress how I want to dress I, that would be horrible for me yeah. you know so I think there are more similarities there. I think the best way too to like when you're talking to a cis person about trans experience, it's like, well, what what would you, how would you feel if like tomorrow it's like, right. no, this is what you have to wear. Right. This is like, you know, you look in the mirror and like this is what you see, mm -hmm. and like you know, every single person is like, oh my god, like no, like that can't happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the best way to like talk to someone about like what it feels like to like have gender affirmation and to like, be trans and transition is like think about you know if you're talking to like a woman like how much you love being a woman mm -hmm. like how much of a woman you are it's right. like yeah and like what makes you a woman like right. you, if you really break it down it's not the dress it's no. not you know it, it's yeah. so much more yeah. it's just who you are being trans is just a vibe you know yeah. <laughs> so it's just, yeah. it is it's something kind of a similar thing I think like how you're saying like switching it on the person to make them understand. Um, you know, someone in my family was like, I just don't get why you need top surgery, like your breasts are so small. And I was like, well, if you had a really tiny penis, would you keep it? Yeah. And she was like, oh no, I would not. I was like, exactly. You yeah. know, you know, even if it's small, it's like when it, you can get a cis person to kind of put themselves in your shoes and in your body, then all of a sudden it kind of cl clicks more. And that's what I want to do with these episodes is really kind of get people to see, you know, how human it all is. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing with like name change too. It's like, you know, people will, when you change your name, will reference you in the past by saying your dead name, which right. is wrong and something right. that, you know, you should never do to a trans person, but yeah. also to a person in general. Like the way I try to like cis rationalize it is like people get divorces all the time. Mm -hmm. People change their names all the time. Mm. I wouldn't like, I had a thing recently where I was talking to somebody and they were referencing someone in their life who was dating somebody right. and they were like, oh, and their name is blah, blah, blah. And so it was my dead name. And they were mm. saying it, trying to be like, you know that name, oh, you know? No. And not in like a, a, a rude, like not, I mean, it was rude, but it wasn't in a way of like malicious. Yeah. And like the intent was just to be like, they just genuinely didn't know. And it right. was just like, oh, like, that's like you. Right. But it's like, okay, in my head, I was like, this woman's had so many divorces, she's been through so much, there's no part of me that I'd be like, oh, there's this person in my life and they're dating this person, their last name is blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Let me reference a name that you used to have that's linked with someone that like, you know, gave you trauma. It's right. like, why would I do that? So it's the same thing. And I think you know, you're right, like, you know, me and Arlo have talked about this so much where like, I don't think that people are most of the time trying to be malicious. 
I don't yeah. think so. I don't think they're trying to hurt you, but I think that's why conversations like this are so important because some people just simply don't know. There's so many like well-meaning allies mm -hmm. out there. That's why it's so important to have you no know, shows like this and have conversations like mm -hmm. this because so many people are afraid to have conversations in their right. life and to talk to certain people in their world and to even broach the subject because they're afraid of being wrong. Yeah. And you know, I feel like a lot of like what we put out there as trans people is like, don't ask someone these questions. Mm -hmm. Don't come to someone and like you know mm -hmm. assume that you can like you know have autonomy over their body or like you know uh, of their life experience right. and you know have these conversations with people. But in the same breath, then where do they get this information? Totally. If you Google a lot of questions within like the trans experience or the queer experience, yeah. you're gonna get a lot of outdated information. You're gonna totally. get you know a lot of you know turfism, a mm -hmm. lot of <laughs> yeah. trans exclu exclusionary radical feminism, yeah. uh, and just a lot of misinformation and the problem is a lot of people will hear one thing and be like now I know everything about trans yeah like this like they get one piece of information or one person's journey and it's like this is now my view on trans world when it's just there's a myriad of experiences so that's true. why we always need to be like sharing and telling our stories right. if we feel willing to mm -hmm. because you never know what you're gonna say who it's gonna reach and if that's that person's entrance to what trans is exactly and I think you're so right about it there being so many different stories and different um, trans experiences and that people why one of the reasons I wanted to do this and why it was inspired by our, like our late night conversations is Arla would like come in my room late at night and we'd sit and we would have conversations like this and I remember thinking like the world needs to hear these conversations happening not just see yeah. a trans representation in a movie or or read a book or we need see more of that too yeah we do need more <laughs> of that too but I think it's literally seeing us as human beings sitting in these chairs talking about our yeah. experiences and you know Arlo this is somewhere you could chime in because Arlo talks about this a lot with um, you know kind of that that line of like should people be able to ask questions but still be respectful and well yeah I mean obviously it, I think that's how people are gonna learn um, not obviously not everybody's gonna be comfortable with it but I totally agree in the sense of like people aren't gonna know unless we say something unless we bring it up. Yeah. Something that like you kind of almost touched on a little bit was how even people who consider themselves allies still make mistakes and cross mm -hmm. boundaries and say things that they kind of shouldn't say. And it's something that I actually have witnessed and dealt with. Um, I've known people who, you know, are generally accepting, mm -hmm. right. but they still will say stuff, and they're not even meaning to, they're not trying to be disrespectful, but they'll say stuff that it's just like, uh, that's not. <laughs> and that's like so profound to hear you say, because you're 13, yeah. <laughs> you know? And that, that's the thing where it's like people, especially with a trans experience, but I know this is, you know, coming out as anything, but really for, for trans kids, it's like people need you to give them an answer. Mm -hmm. Like, so many kids are so scared mm -hmm. to come out and be wrong. Right. Because it's like, tell me who you are. Mm -hmm. Like, tell me how you got here and like what this is and like what do I call you? And I, like a lot of like the trans journey is clunkiness. It's like, yeah. I don't know. How would I? Like, right. I was raised in a world where, you know, it's, and this is gonna sound so Tumblr, but like, you know, like cis heteronormative. And yeah. it's like, for the longest time, we weren't able to see ourselves. And the moment that we got that clarity, it's like, right. you're wrong for this. Right. And so there's so much that like, of like trans youth that they not only have to navigate being themselves in a world that tells them this isn't a thing right. or it's wrong, but they have to then be a teacher for people that totally. should be teachers for them. Right. So it's amazing exactly. hearing you as 13 being like, you're saying this, I know you mean well, which is like so much emotional intelligence on your part to be able to navigate that, but to be like, and that's still wrong to say. And then it's like, yeah. now you're in the position to what be that teacher for that exactly. person. And that's so that's so much pressure. And a it lot of pressure. people don't know how to receive that information, even just right. like messing up pronouns. It's like, right. oh my pronouns are this. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's a huge song and dance where I'm right. like, I am so sorry, I am so sorry, I'm totally. so I see you, I see you, I see you. And you're yeah. like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. I don't want to deal with that. And yeah, so exactly. it's that anxiety picket in your in your stomach, like, okay, I'm just gonna keep it pushing. <laughs> like yeah. I'm just not gonna say anything, which yeah. is why again it's so important to like have this, do type this. show. Exactly. So then people are able to get information and then treat their loved ones accordingly. Right, totally. And then we're gonna start asking some questions that I think are, are gonna help both people who are trans themselves and maybe the people around them. But it's so true what you said because when people I've had family members mess up my pronouns and then it's the biggest deal and then everyone's looking and then it's this all yeah. and I'm like, yeah. can we just move on now, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, if there is someone listening who has, you know, a gender non-conforming person in their life, I think most people like an apology and then to simply move on and then 
use the right pronouns the rest of the time. Yeah, and something that like, I've always heard too that I think is genius is when someone um, corrects your pronouns, like, or when, yeah, when someone says like, oh, it's, you know, it's actually he, yeah. instead of saying, oh my God, I'm so sorry, yeah. saying, oh my God, thank you. Yeah, and then moving yeah. On. right. Because a thank you Even better. elicits yeah. such a different response to the totally. person instead of like, I'm so sorry. You're yeah. right. Thank you so much. Right. You're right. And then keep it pushing. Love that. Yeah. That, act, that is brilliant because yeah. I didn't even think of it that way because that's more saying like, oh, like, thank you for giving you're me that information. putting it on the other person. Totally. Yeah. Of like, you know, yeah. uh, you know, then we just Yeah, did no, that's, that's great. But honestly, like sometimes what is one of the best things to hear when someone, um, when you correct your pronouns for someone yeah. and they just go, oh, okay, and keep talking. <laughs> yeah. One of the best things. Arlo Love that. loves that because Arlo's really about kind of just normalizing. Yeah, normalizing things as much as yeah. possible. So they like to be like, okay, cool. Anyways, you know, yeah. like yeah. You, you're he him, you're they them. Okay, great. And so what do you want for lunch? You know? Yeah, exactly. And like I, I do understand that we do have to have, like you said, like we do have to have these conversations to get there. Um, but it is just nice sometimes when people are kind of more just normal about it. They, they treat it like it's yeah. an everyday thing. And I think that's really cool. Because I mean, like pronouns that. are just saying like, I see you, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. so it's like, oh, I see you. Right. And like, and that's also a thing too, where it's like, there is a period of like, you know, having like grace for other people for lack of a better word. Right. And like something that I remember telling myself was like, I didn't get the language to put to how I felt. And the next day was like, and I'm here. Mm -hmm. It took a while for me to really deconstruct, you know, the ideas that have been put in my head since birth. And we, totally. you know, live in a world that, you know, is cis and het and it's straight and mm -hmm. it's, you know, religious. Mm -hmm. And it, there's, yeah. you know, so many pillars here that like there's a, a, lot, a lot of unlearning that you have to do. And so Absolutely. kind of having that grace for other people of like, it's, you know, understanding the intent behind it. Right. But also, you know making sure now that we do know they're held accountable yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's forward. it's such a fine line and i think you're right because i think so many people don't realize for a trans person like how new this still is even for us right. when you've been raised this way yeah. your whole life like you know i didn't transition at, i'm 32 and i transitioned at 30 so a lot of times i tell people i feel two years old not 32 years old you know my and life so much just regression started that happens too because yeah. it's like you weren't able to do so many so things, many things. Or feel so many yeah things. you mm -hmm. weren't able to live that life as you know whatever as you, you came yeah. out with yeah yeah. I know you guys love fashion so much and like I know the fashion so like integral part of like my transition journey because right. I for the longest time wasn't able to dress the way I wanted right. and then it wasn't like you know I came out and I had the ability to do this and then I like dressed fabulously and you know I was like the perfect yeah. version of me there was such a regression period where I tried so many styles and this wasn't even like me knowing this like yeah. in hindsight I'm like oh my god <laughs> uh, I was dressing the way that like boys in my class dressed yeah. in like the early 2000s yeah. I was you know I had the big chunky skater shoes <laughs> I had the element shirt it wasn't like you know I, I did like a whole like sports situation for the longest time I was like 22 wearing like jerseys <laughs> to like teams I don't follow yeah. like is this baseball I don't know yeah. it just looked really cool but yeah. it's like yeah that makes sense because like in high school I you know grew up in a town where a lot of kids were like playing sports right so, so like, that was like what you you know identified as I like was being now, a man yeah. it was so exciting yeah. for me to be able to like try things out and then move through those phases right. and like and I think people are so scared to like say the word phase it's like yeah. no we no. go through so many phases yes as thank people. you and thank like, you my biggest like advice like if I could go back in time and like shake a baby miles is that you cannot <laughs> get to point d unless you go through point A, point B, point C. I have, you just gave me chills because I literally have been saying what you just said mm -hmm. for so long. And I think so many people don't get that. Like me and Arlo have had this, this discussion because since they are younger, a lot of times I think their brain really wants to go from A to Z like this very quickly. I mean, I'm not like calling you out. I'm just saying, you know, like I think your experience is a little different. Well, it's and so I, what I'm trying to say is that I think that you do to get there, it's just such a zigzag, long, crazy pattern, ups, downs, and no, finally. No, for sure. No, I don't think that it's not gonna take that. I know that it's gonna have to be that way. So I, what I sometimes mean when we have these conversations is that I just wish it could be that yeah. way. Listen, but, yeah. 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 yeah, everyone wishes that for sure. Yeah. But that kind of brings me to, so we're gonna get into fashion in a little bit because that's gonna be a part of every episode. Right. Um, since we and Arlo do love fashion, we believe that queer fashion is so important. Um, and we're also gonna get kind of more into your space in the queer entertainment world and YouTube and everything you've done. But first, we just really wanna kind of get these like basics out of the way. What does it mean to be trans for you? 
great wording of that question. Because, yeah, I mean, it's different for everybody. Right. And I think something that gets really lost when we talk about the trans experience is people think that it's about conformity mm-hmm. when it's about living authentically. Right. Yes. And so, you know, I'm sure from an outside perspective, someone would, you know, see what I've done in the name of gender affirmation and think, oh, I dress this way because a boy dresses this way. Mm-hmm. I look this way because, you know, a guy looks this way. Like, mm-hmm. I'm trying to, you know, be myself, but myself as a guy, and I'm trying to conform to what a guy looks like. I don't look like this because this is what a guy looks like. I look like this because I look like, look like me. Yeah. Exactly. You know? It's so true. I, I just and got like, chills again, so. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, like, you know, getting um, gendered correctly in public, you know, getting affirmed by other people, that's a part of it. But, like, I like the way I feel when I'm alone. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember, like, before yes. top surgery, like, I couldn't go, like, work out at the gym because, right. like, I'm not gonna wear a sports bra and I couldn't wear my binder and right. I would wear so many hoodies and it was just like so many layers and I was like, okay, I'm gonna work out at, at, at home. And I couldn't wear a sports bra at home by myself. Yeah. Like I would like, I just yeah. didn't work out. I was yeah. like, it was not like, I was not okay. I was transgender, you know? Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's, it's a piece of it is being affirmed and seen by other people, but really you just need to be seen by yourself. Mm-hmm. Like I look like me. 100%. And that's like the biggest thing where, you know, people could see me like five years ago and I didn't look the same, I didn't sound the same, but I felt the same. Right. I've always been this, I just haven't always been able to be it. Right, that's exactly Exactly. what I've been saying for so long, is like when family members have been like, well, you know, this all happened so suddenly, and like for you, I'm like, you know, for me, I have felt this exact same way my entire life. Yeah. And so I think if there is a young trans person listening to this, and I think this is where, you know, I don't know, I'm sure you get the same comments and DMs, but I get these young people saying like, how do I know I'm trans? I think I feel like you do, but I don't know, I'm scared. And I think what you just said is so true because I think it's something you just know in yourself. And then, yeah, later on you can do the testosterone or the estrogen and you can, you know, have people affirming your gender with your voice or whatever it is, but really it's just on the inside you know. Yeah, and I always tell kids too, I get the the same things and I'm like, you know, a label is just a way to package yourself up and give it to someone else. Right. You don't need a label to dress the way you want to dress. To sleep at night. say what you want to say. (laughs) Yeah, and to, you know, hold the hand of someone that you want to hold their their hand. Uh, You don't need a label for that. And so I always say, just live your life. Mm -hmm. And that's not like, let's go get hormones and surgery. Like, you know, that's why like, you know, clinical psychologists, you know, are, big friend and ally to the trans community, you know, you're able to have a space that's affirming that's not only able to like write letters for you and stuff if you Mm -hmm. want to medically transition, but have a space where you're able to honestly work through these things and figure out what's the best route for your transition, what does that transition look like? But like being trans is just, you know, being you. Existing. Just living your life authentically and you don't need a label to do that. No, and I think that's so good for people who, if there's anyone that was listening right now and they maybe agree with some of the trans legislation, Oh my God! Legislation that is happening right now. We hate it so much we can't <laughs> yeah, even say it. Can't even say it. Leave our mouths. Literally, um, you know. And I think they just they make it seem like there were these monsters trying to get every kid to chop up their bodies. And what you said was just so beautiful because you're not you're saying yeah, like if later on or whenever you want that, you can have that. But really, this is just who you are and who you go to sleep with at night and who you when you look in the mirror and when you put on the clothing you put on and. When you're listening to the music you're listening to, it's just you, it's your inside. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't make up this analogy, like I know this has been said many different ways, but it's something that's so true for me, where I feel like we are all born with this compass inside us, right? Mm -hmm. And it points north, and north is our truth, Mm -hmm. okay? And that takes us towards the music we like, the people we like, the ideas Mm -hmm. we like, you know, the places and things that we love with no reason behind it. It's just innate in us. But we live in a world where people will tell you, and people told me this, your compass is broken. Right. It's wrong. And it actually points south. And I followed south for a long time. So did I. (laughs) And I wasn't happy. Yeah. And so that's like what's so cool about seeing you at 13. Like you, like I would have like looked up to you so hard. Like the kids and also the people that are like, you know, kids in that, like meaning they're in the adolescence of their their own journey. You know, I'm sure like look towards you as someone that is such a champion for like what they're going through because like you're able to live authentically and be yourself and use your voice and you know like what you were saying too about family members and stuff Mm -hmm. it's like I'm sure people that didn't really know me they thought they knew me but you know they saw me in like high school right would be like you know you were happy Mm -hmm. because I had friends Mm -hmm. I did my work and I laughed I made jokes I wasn't fulfilled because I wasn't doing things that were meant for me 
yeah, I mean, I can't identify with that more. Like, and I, I even went as far as, you know, to get pregnant and be this young mom. And I tried to do all the things that I, my compass was pointing south, thinking I was doing the right thing. Yeah. And, you know, it literally was two years ago when I finally felt that, you know, north <laughs> pointing compass. And, you know, I think with Arla, why a lot of the reason they are the way they are, other than just them innately being who they are, is that like their uh, compass was, I was like, whatever you want. Yeah. And they've never been able to, like, been forced any other way. So that's why they can just be so, you know, do you agree with that? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no, Dad. You, you can't shake your head. You have to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's amazing. And that's amazing that you had the gift of being able to, like, raise someone else, you know, and, like, do it differently, yeah. presumably. You know, you know what's so crazy? Like, with our story, there were so many parts that I was like, I know this is meant to be, but I just don't know why yet. And just really recently, like since my transition, I looked back and I was like, oh my God, like it made so much sense that like I was in the closet raising this like little baby because I hated how I felt so much that I did everything in my power to make sure they didn't have that experience. Oh and so, you know, maybe- getting chills, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's like, and then, you know, then later on now, you know, Arlo's pronouns are they, them, and it's like, seeing that and seeing them comfortable to, to say that is like, made me really feel like my whole life came full circle. Oh my God. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. okay, we kind of went oh. off a little bit, but. <laughs> I did actually want to touch on the phase thing real quick. Um, just because you kind of were saying like, people are really afraid to say the word phase. Yeah. And I, the, the reason for that is because of the history the word phase has behind it. Sure. People, uh, especially like gender nonconforming people, wouldn't be afraid to say the word phase if it wasn't for cis people, honestly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because they made it seem like a phase was a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the truth is, like they, a lot of cis people bring up this thing of like, well, what if you change your mind? And you, what if you, you know, let's say it's someone who's taking testosterone. And they're like, well, what if you wanted to stop taking testosterone and you wanted to detransition de or something? And it's like, then they do that. that yeah. That's not a bad thing. That doesn't have to be this crazy thing. It's okay if they want to do that. You yeah. know what I mean? That doesn't make their experience from before disappear. Yeah. They still were feeling those, you know, feelings of being gender nonconforming. Yeah, no, I resonate with that with like, no, I've literally been LGBT. And yeah. there's no way I could be the Miles McKenna I am today if I wasn't all the people that I was before. Like right. there but there is no way. Like I did not have the language, and even if I got the language to be like out as trans, I didn't have the space to be able to do that right. at a young age. But what I was able to do was really like form my masculinity and feel loved and like have like acceptance within my identity through the queer experience, right. you know, where it's like I only dated girls in my adolescence. Right. I was, you know, lived as like a lesbian basically, but it was funny where I never said I was a lesbian. I'd always say, no, I'm gay, I'm gay, which mm -hmm. like, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have the language to be yeah. like, why does this really femme word that Not feel forms right. everyone else around me, do it feels so foreign to me. Felt the exact same way for me. Yeah. The exact same way. And so it's like, you know, I, I wouldn't be able, there's no way I could have gotten here today if I didn't go through all the different avenues that I, I did before, yeah. you know? So right. I think what Arlo's basically bringing up is that it's almost like we're trying to like, deconstruct and you know take away that negative connotation around the right. word because yeah. and it, you know it's funny like people will like hate on you know an lgbtq plus person going through a phase but straight cis people go through phases, phases constantly all the time yeah. and nobody yeah. says anything so of course like you know to get to where you want in your journey you're gonna have all these different experiences like even when i started testosterone i started it for a non-binary transition and i was microdosing mm -hmm. and i thought i was gonna stay they them and within two months i felt so amazing for the first time in 30 years that i, I was like no thing. yeah this i'm going thing. i was like up 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 my dose like yeah, yeah so i mean i feel like you know this bringing it back to you know it's it's not cis versus trans it's you know we're all human mm -hmm. um and i've talked about this with other people i've never said this like publicly okay so i don't know this is an exclusive like, this is a this miles is exclusive, exclusive. <laughs> no but this is genuinely how i feel people will look at like the kardashians right mm -hmm. and they'll be like oh like they are doing the, these lip injections and all this <laughs> like you know body modification mm -hmm. i don't see that much of a difference from like what someone would do in the name of body modification um, within plastic surgery like mm -hmm. the Kardashians mm -hmm. versus me yeah. with like top surgery. Because mm -hmm. what agree. are we both, what's the goal here? We both want to look like ourselves. Right. 
Yeah. We both we want to feel good when we're looking at ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. I don't see a difference. Yeah. So it's like exactly you know, the, that, and you know, it's why is because it doesn't really have to do with that at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. Because if it the, did, we yeah. they, they would ban you know boob jobs. And, right. It, you know. it doesn't have anything to do with that. It's inherently just really being transphobic. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so let's kind of like for maybe a young person listening. I know. There's just not a lot out there. Um, wh- when you're young and you think, okay, I'm may- maybe trans, I may be non-binary, I-, I just don't know where to start. I remember even at 30, I didn't even know where to start. So I just like Googled like, you know, where to get testosterone. Like what did you do and what could you kind of tell a young person listening like first steps, step yeah. one? I mean, I was really fortunate where I came out when I was 21 um, and I was already working in like queer rights basically. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I was, doing public speaking, I was acting, I was mm-hmm. doing, you know, digital content, and I was, like, working with nonprofits. I was already positioned, like, to be very supported in that way. And mm-hmm. so I reached out to people in my community. Like, you know, I'd worked with, like, a right. lot of trans people through the years. And so I just reached out to people and was like, hey, I just came out. Yeah. And, you know, everyone was just so welcoming, and, like, people just were giving me information of, like, hey, you know, this is, you know, um, my endo, this is this, like, mm-hmm. you have a therapist, like, here's how I got connected with mine, and just, right. you know, talking with my community, which I ended up, you know, now that I'm older and stuff, and I, I have a lot of friends that are, like, elder trans people, it's, like, mm-hmm. that is so what we've done for centuries. Like, right. you know, trans people, if you think about, you know, like, pre, like, you know, gay liberation, and, like, you know, the pre, like, Christopher Street and everything, it's, like, we had to, you know, mobilize within our communities and right. get information, you know, interpersonally because we didn't have the internet. Right. So, like, being able to just, like, talk to someone one-on-one was the biggest thing for me. I agree, and I think, like, basically what's happening now for the younger generation, Reddit is almost, like, similar to, you know, the actual in-person queer experience yeah. because it was the same for me because I already lived in L.A., I was older, I had... An, like extensive queer trans community around me where literally I was just like, hey, where did you get your t- testosterone? And yeah. like Googled and oh, LGBT center popped up. That's where everyone was getting it anyways. Go and on like, Schrader. And yeah, the one on Schrader. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are all the time. Um, but I think there's a lot of people that are in states that don't have that. And I think they're in towns that they don't have that community. So like something I tell people, it's so hard to give these young people like just this solid advice because you're not in their shoes, in their home, in their town. You don't know exactly the environment they're in and what's safe for them. But one thing I always say to them is if you could even get an online queer community to help you and to talk and just have that support, that is even huge. In the meantime, until you can eventually find that, you know. Well, that's why I was making stuff online. I mean, it was purely for me to find peer support because I didn't have that, you know, IRL. So I tried to find that URL. So that was like my entire digital content was born out of just needing to find and relate to other people. Right. Get this information. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we're both older and we kind of already had like a queer community, but there's kids obviously out there that don't. So do you want to like plug in some resources for them? I don't know any resources. <laughs> I don't know anything about anything. I just got here. Uh, You're the no, trans I, king. Yeah, transgender. So no, so uh, the Trevor Project, a lot of people know because of their life-saving work uh, within like their suicide hotline. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of people don't know, you can actually communicate with them for anything. You had a Amazing. hard day at school. You're trying to figure out pronouns. Your mom said something, you feel weird about it. They don't, like, not only have a number you can call, and on their website, they've got Trevor Chat, where you can, like, reach out to someone, like, on your computer. They now have Trevor Text. And so that's, that's open that's cool. 24-7, 365 days a year. When I was a teenager, I, they only had, the back in my day, they only <laughs> had uh, the phone number. Right. So I would call, and I would hang up. And I would call, and I would hang up, because my thing is, I was like, I just want to tell one person that I'm trans. Right. This is when I was really trying to figure this out, right? So I wasn't out with anything. And I was like, I think I'm trans. And if I could just say it to someone, but it's like, who do you say that to? Because the moment I say it, I feel like now I'm going to be, you know, held to it. And it's like, right. I don't know. And you're, right. you, know, you said this earlier, it's like hard to come out and be like, I don't know. Right. Because people confuse not knowing with like, not knowing yourself, yeah. like this isn't the right thing for you. Like, right. You should know. Yeah. You should know a hundred thousand percent. How that's so much pressure for me. Again, I just got here. So yeah. <laughs> uh, Trevor text six seven eight six seven eight is the number. You can just text start. You're gonna be. Um, it's like all confidential. They have like uh, all gender neutral pronouns. Uh, for like everybody, you give like a different name, you uh, are connected with a counselor that's trained. A lot of my friends work with the Trevor Project mm-hmm. and are the people that, you know, do this work. And mm-hmm. so if you just need anyone, an ear to listen, 
it's the it's the Trevor Project. That's sure. amazing. And like awesome. I have actually like I'm about to work with the Trevor Project, and I, had, I didn't even know the text thing. <laughs> so I think that's like amazing for someone listening right now. That's probably going to be like, oh my god, that exists, and I can be anonymous. Right. And, and I mean, like, if you want to call, more power to you. Yeah. That is not me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I don't even want to call like a doctor. So, like, <laughs> no. I think um, and now we're going to kind of get into a little bit of like your online presence and then we're going to kind of like go from there into like fashion and, and you know, we talked a little bit about like being queer fashion and how you like to dress, but we'll kind of delve into that a little more. But for right now, um, you know, I've seen some of your YouTube videos and oh like God. we said, we love, <laughs> we love your energy and everything. But one that was so interesting to me was when you said you stopped testosterone. Is that current? Yeah, um, no, so yeah, that's, I, a lot of people think that I'm on T, oh, that's a thing too, where it's like, you know, what does it mean to be trans? People are like, you have to do X, Y, C, A, B, yeah. D, you know, yeah. um, no, so I was on hormones for not even two years, and I've been off hormones for a really long time. I was on hormones beginning of 2017 until the end of 2018. Oh, wow. And so, estrogen is the dominant sex hormone in my body. I went through a lot of changes after, which we were talking about before, like my, you mentioned my curly hair. Yeah. And my hair only got curly after getting off of tea. Oh my because God. there's like an influx of estrogen. And so That's a lot crazy. of people, like when they get pregnant, they'll, their hair will get curly oh, because of the crazy. hormones. Right. So there's so many changes that happen that I was like, with the curly hair, I was like, wait, <laughs> I would have loved this if I got on tea. Yeah, I, exactly. I like, this is amazing. So yeah, I'm yeah. not on testosterone. And um, I remember in the video, you had like a couple reasons why, like one was anxiety, I believe. Yeah, they, it, I still don't have all the answers. So I didn't realize I was really, really anxious, but it was also like presumably so. I'm right. just coming out. I was also coming out like in front of hundreds of thousands of people. Right. Um, and I didn't have, you know, fam family support. And I was also, I was so young. Like at the time it's like, oh my God, I'm 21. I'm coming out. Like people are doing this and you know, like you, you know who you are and you're 13. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Uh, but no, I mean, I was so young and I also came from so much trauma. So right. like I was not discerning at all with like the people that were in my life. Like you want to hang out with me? I want to hang out with you. I'm like yeah. a puppy. Like I literally was just wanting and needing like anything. I was just like, you know, I've been in a lot of therapy. Anyway, <laughs> um, you know, I had a lot of anxiety and I ended up, I went to two different endos. I went to an Eastern medicine doctor and a Western medicine doctor. And everyone was like, well, you started testosterone. And I don't know what the clinical term would be, but mm -hmm. I like, someone was telling me like, you're so high energy and like testosterone gives you energy. Like right. it's doing something crazy. Yeah, it's almost I, like creating adrenaline or. I was having insane panic attacks every single day. And it Jeez. was like, what if you tried getting off of tea and then see how you feel? And right. then I didn't have the panic attacks. So right. I was like, oh damn, I hope uh, I like the way I look and feel after this. <laughs> Let's see. And I yeah. totally did. Yeah. Um, so and yeah. Yeah, your voice, like, like voice wise, it sounds, to, I mean, I, I guess I didn't see that much of you before, like yeah. when you were like on your highest tea, but it sounds the same to me. Thank you. You're like, you sound like a woman. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it sounds exactly the same. Like, yeah. it, like if you were on like the highest dose of tea, you know, like, yeah, well, that was a thing too. That was so funny. When I first went to my endo, um, this is like, I'm like 20, 21 years old and they were like, okay, so you know, we did the whole pronoun dance and they're like, so why did you get off tea the first time? And I was like, what do you mean the first time? I was like, I've never been on tea before. Like, that's why I'm here today. Like, they messed up the first time in heaven. Like, yeah. I, I, I was never been on testosterone. Yeah. And you're like, that's so weird because your levels, they got my, you know, my blood results back. I didn't go to college, so I don't know what that means. Uh, <laughs> but they got me, my results back and they're like, oh, you have high tea levels of that of someone who would like have been on tea and then got off. And I was like, is this how cis people feel all the time? <laughs> yeah, Just their body being correct. I was yeah. like, wow, I love that. I know, I actually say that all the time. I remember when like the testosterone was like actually like, running through my body and I was like, really feeling it. I was like, this is how people feel just born this way. I was well, like, this so is nuts. You. You're going to have top surgery really soon. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I was oh going to ask God. you about that too, because I know you've had yours, but I'm going to have mine in July. Oh my God. I'm really excited about it. I've been, you know, 30, you know, I guess no, cause I probably didn't get breast till like 11, but so like 20 years ish where yeah. I've been waiting to do this. So yeah, it's so exciting. And how, after you got your, t uh, your, top surgery, how did you feel like the first time you looked in the mirror? Well, it was crazy because I really thought, like I remember the week leading up to it, um, I was like, you know, noticing things, and, you know, about like just like my body and how I feel and I'm like, oh my God, like this is gonna be different. Like mm -hmm. this is gonna be different. And I was yeah. really waiting for like, to feel the, you know, the differences. And it was just like so nice. And it was like, oh, obviously I would feel this way. <laughs> it really was just like felt normal. That's amazing. And right. Like yeah. I really thought it was like, oh, like going downstairs is gonna feel different now. <laughs> like, no, it was just like, 
I really just could not wait to heal and yeah. then go into a swimming pool. Like yeah. it was just, and it's funny too, where it's like, I don't know, I don't know if other trans people, and I wonder if you guys can speak to this as well. My memories are almost corrective in a way where like, if I think back to like being in middle school or anything, mm. because you're living like your own POV, right? right. Like, and you don't see yourself in a third person. I just, when in my memories too, I always feel like I've had top surgery. I right. always feel like a guy in my dreams too. Like I dream yeah. as male and it's like, I just felt right. And I was right. like, that's so nice that that is like, obviously would be the reaction, but right. it wasn't as um, like ceremonial as I thought it'd be. Right. It was just like, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's like a lot of people, like I've talked to a lot of trans guys who say like, they were almost like disappointed because they were like, I thought like literally everything was going to change in that moment. But really it was like, they were almost like more, I just got content. Yeah. And I think that's important for people to know like that, that is how it's probably going to feel more. Yeah. I have a feeling the first time I can have my shirt off at a beach or a pool, I'm probably going to feel like euphoria, <laughs> like, like never before. But at the same time, if it is just feeling really content and content in my body, I'm so happy for that too. So yeah. well, I thought it was going to be like that. almost weird too, like being shirtless places because yeah. like we are so programmed. Like that's yes. not, you yeah. can't do that. You can't do you that. You can't do that. But no, it was just really like, Natural. I just felt normal. And I was like, thank Amazing. God. <laughs> it was like, yeah. That's so good. Um, and a little bit back to like your YouTube and like real quick, like when we were talking about you stopping testosterone, one thing I don't want that to be is like almost like putting fear in anyone that is like going to listen to that and be like, oh my God, like what if I get anxiety? Like I oh, wanted dude, to bring yeah, that up yeah. more to just to show that everyone has these different experiences and the fact that you stopped it doesn't make you feel any less yeah. of a man and doesn't make yeah, you feel exactly. any less trans. And this is just your experience. Like yeah. I just want the listeners to know like that's what I was highlighting and you know, maybe you can even kind of yeah, for sure. I mean, like, I am so happy I got on tea and I'm so happy I got off tea. I mean, like, I love the way I look. I look like me. I love the mm. way I sound. I sound like me. I love the things I say. I love yeah. the people in my life. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, we're doing it. Like, this Hell is, yeah. like, what I wanted. Like, if I could go back to, like, me in 2016, trying right. to, like, party plan what's <laughs> going on right now with this, like, medical transition. Like, oh, I love, I love it all. Yeah. And it's crazy, too, where it's, like, there was a period of, like, uh, like a feminization that did happen because, okay. you know, estrogen is coming back. So, right. like, I, it's funny, though, because it's, like, I lost so much muscle mass right mm. and like the fat redistribution that happens like right. on tea totally reversed and at first i was like oh my god like this is you know it was really hard for me right. but it's like i'm now in better shape than i ever have been in my entire life because i work out every right, day it's like right. i wasn't working out at the time yeah, like you know it's like, like, i stuff, had yeah. natural stuff from you know testosterone but it's like you know now it's like oh yeah i have to work 10 times harder than like all my friends are cis gay men so yeah. it's like, you know they, <laughs> yeah. they go to the gym like twice a week i'm in there every single day yeah but it's like it's, you know, it's not, in my head, it felt like, no, I have to be on T because that's right. what I'm supposed to do. Right. But it's like, no, it's, um, yeah, that, that was my it's, journey. Yeah, it's an individual journey, for I sure. think, right. for sure. And also, like, kind of going, you know, and the, the stuff you've done and, like, the following you've gained, like, what do you think is the most exciting thing that's happened to you since, like, you started getting that following on YouTube? It Was it YouTube first or? Yeah, yeah, it was YouTube first. Okay. Um, and it was, you know, I, like I said earlier, I really went on YouTube and like, I mean, I started making videos when I was 11, right? So I was two years younger than you. And that That's was crazy. the wild west of the internet. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have the algorithm. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, we're no, I remember. Stuff. Yeah. And like, you know, through my teen years, as I started to really find myself and realize how different I was from not just the people around me, but from who they saw me as, um, I really, it became a lifeline and a space mm -hmm. for me to get answers to questions and find people that feel the same way that I do. And so I was kicked out of the house um, all the time as a teenager. Damn. After I was 18, it was like, you're an adult now, you have to leave, goodbye. <laughs> um, and so I you know, slept on friends' couches, I slept in my car. A lot of my early videos were me in my car. And I never said why, right? And so people would right. always be like, why is he in his, in his car? Yeah. Um, and it, you know, it just seemed like I was real quirky and I was having fun, but it's like, I couldn't go home. Yeah, that's crazy. I also couldn't say these things in my house. You know, right. I was like making jokes uh, that were not okay. And so, you know, uh, my first ever coming out video that I did wasn't me being like, guys, this is who I am and I'm, I'm gay or like right. whatever. It was me being like, hey guys, um, I'm sleeping on this YouTuber's couch because I can't go home. Right. And it was just me really, and I didn't even realize it was a coming out video at the time. I didn't realize at the time I hadn't even really said that I was queer. Mm -hmm. And what I thought was a very singular experience, me being an only child and I felt so, so alone, mm -hmm. I was able to find so many people that felt the same way that I did. Yeah. And I never say like, I make videos for queer and trans kids. A lot of those people are the people that receive what right. I put out, but I make videos and I make content for people who feel different. Yes. That's everyone. Yes, I 
everyone so chills again. has felt different. <laughs> exactly. And that was a lot of people that, you know, it wasn't also, you know, everyone that was like, you know, vibing with my content were like, yeah, I'm also, you know, on the streets. It was like, right. no, yeah, I, I also, I, I feel what different you're saying. Entirely, and like, right. I, you know, I said this to my mom and she said this and I feel like this. Like, yeah. So I think the biggest thing that I got from it was family. Right. And right. also That's community. Amazing. Yeah. And the, and the chance to, to really be myself and that not be met with violence or silence. Amazing. I love that. It just gave me yeah. chills. <laughs> and, you know, like, I think something I've said, too, is that, you know, people have brought up like, oh, you only talk about being trans and you only talk about LGBTQ things. And it's like, sometimes I am tired of it. Like, sometimes I do just want to exist and not have to talk about being trans. Mm -hmm. But what, why I do this and why I think it's so important is exactly what you just said. I'm not only trying to highlight a queer experience, I'm trying to sh use queer people as an example yeah. of so many feelings and right. experiences that so many people have, have gone through. And I think, like you said, like it could be a 12 year old who maybe is in a, a violent home yeah. and they identify with that part of your story. Yeah. Or, you know, for me, like I've talked about like growing up so religious, I wasn't even allowed to read Harry Potter. And like, uh, yeah. like it was like that religious. Yeah. So obviously coming out for me was not an option. Yeah. And, but maybe it's that someone also grew up just so religious or, you know, whatever it is. I think one of the most beautiful thing about queer people is that because if they are out there and you're hearing their story, they've overcome so much at that point. And that's why there's always gonna be someone listening that can be like, oh my God, like I look up to you, or oh my God, I identify with you, or I resonate with you. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why queer people are such like trailblazers in you know, the entertainment space and online and everywhere. Yeah, and going back to you know talking about LGBTQ plus stuff, you know, when I was younger, I mean, I've really grown up with the internet, right? And so I'm 26 now, I'm turning 27 this year. The way I look at my like digital platform is so different because I'm now no longer, you know, putting stuff out there to get someone else that's like me mm -hmm. to be like, yeah, I see you and yeah. like get that, you know, affirmation. I'm affirmed by just being me and right. like I'm older now and I yeah. don't need the internet to validate me and my experience. Totally. But what I do use it for is because I remember being that kid and I would find like like a, a trans person, okay? And I would scroll down on their, their feed all the way back until they looked like me at the time. Mm. They had the long hair. They were, you know, and like for the longest time when I was first transitioning, I privatized so many videos. I privatized so many pictures. I was like, that's not me, that's not me. Right. And I, you know, wrote a book. And at the time, you know, I wrote a book when I was when I was 21. It came out a few years later. And there is no like transition photos. There's no, here's the long hair. Yes. And here's me in the same shirt with the short hair. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, I, I didn't want that. And I remember right. saying to like, you know, my publisher, I was like, why do I have to show people who I'm not mm -hmm. for them to believe me when I say this is who I am. Yeah. yeah. Why do I have to show what I'm not? Like, no, this right. is who I am. I wrote a whole book. Read that. Yeah. And now, <laughs> yeah. you know, I feel so much differently where it's like, I, I think I helped, well, I know I helped a lot of people yeah. love themselves and release a lot of shame when it comes to their identity when I was younger. And that was all an accident. <laughs> I really was just trying to figure it out for myself and right. somehow we all did it together. Right. But now I'm trying to really help people on purpose. Yes. So I really make things intentionally that like yeah. a young me could look at and be like, okay, cool. Right, yeah. that's exactly what we do too. Like I, when I was deciding, when I was first on TikTok, I, I was almost like, it's gonna be so nice. i have already transitioned. Nobody even has to ever know I was pregnant or anything. Yeah. And then, you know, I've talked about this before where like what, you know, I was deciding whether to do it or not. And, you know, a 13 year old had DM'd me and was like basically like saying how much they were struggling. And when I like look at- a dad that has to be so hard. Yes, exactly. Like, like, like waiting, like me receiving that information. Yes, like, like yeah. you know, totally. You get so soft as a parent, by the way. But, um, and I, so the next day I literally posted my video that was showed all the way from like a kid to getting pregnant, to giving birth to, you know, Arlo, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and if I wouldn't have done that, I mean, it, it hit so many people and I'm so glad I did it now, but I could see if I would have been 21, I might have not done it because I might have been like, no, like I, why does someone have to see that part of me? But I think when you get older, you start to realize, like we kind of talked about earlier, is it's like, it's this whole journey, right? Yeah. We're trying to show people the, the kid that might identify you with your longer hair to the kid in the middle, to the kid now, you know? Yeah. And yeah. now we have a podcast about it. <laughs> Look at that, I know. And Interview 13. with my kid. <laughs> so let's kind of steer away from that for a second. And I, one of the things I want to highlight in every episode of this show is queer love. So Arlo, maybe you can ask Miles a little bit about that. 
All right, hold on. Sorry, let me get my so professional. Let me, let me get my papers, my Not documents. Only it's weather. My, my documents. So, are you in a relationship right now? I'm not. Thank God. Really? I don't want anybody in my house. No. <laughs> Amazing. Like we, the only reason we even like ask this, it's not like to like, you know, get that like drama. That drama. Yeah. I just yeah. let me really, give you the realty. Yeah, yeah. I really, yeah. I want people, especially young people, like listening to be like, you know, h- highlight queer love and see because so many people have commented on my yeah. stuff and been like oh my god I just feel like I'm gonna be alone if I come out yeah. and I'm like you will not be yeah. there is always someone out there for you yeah. like a thousand percent and that's the thing too where it's like when I was younger and I you know had to leave home I really like looking back at my old like relationships whether they be like friendships like you know platonic or like you know romantic uh, people I was intertwined with I if I could go back in time again and shake a baby me <laughs> Love is unconditional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do not have to do, say, or be anything other than yourself to receive that. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, and it sounds like so hallmark, um, you know, and I I think like if I would have said that when I was younger, I'd be like, what do you mean? Like, (laughs) all my friends love me. And like, yeah, that duh, you know, of course. No, like I really did not. And like RuPaul says it best, right? If you can't love yourself, how the hell are you gonna love somebody else? Like I really was just trying so hard to get people to like me mm-hmm. because I came from, you know, the moment I was vulnerable you know, yeah. and I had a coming out experience, my entire family was like, goodbye. Yeah. Like, right. no, like, you know, right. like I would go home and they would be, everyone would be silent. Like I remember one night, like I came home and it was like, I was doing some gay shit and I came home. <laughs> no one would talk to me or look at me. It, like literally to the point where it was like, I said something and my, one of my parents was like, did you hear something <gasps> like that? It was very like no. psychological warfare oh my of God. like, I was a ghost now. As a parent, I yeah. can't comprehend it. Jeez. And at that point, and like, mind you, at that point, like I was just like, I think I want to kiss my best friend. Like, let's talk about that. <laughs> you were like so, giving them like the tip oh, of the they iceberg. Hate me today. <laughs> yeah. like, Damn. And speaking of which, like, you know, I, I also want people who are listening to know that like, we talk about that like gender, like your mm. he, they, and your sexuality are two different things. So like yeah. Yeah. you sexuality wise, like you date men, correct? I do date men, yes. <laughs> okay, Miles dates men. So if do you're you out there, men? he's obviously amazing. Why are you asking? <laughs> All of a sudden, this just turns into a dating show. Yeah, We're like, come you're on about down. to go on a blind yeah. date. <laughs> I love that. Uh, we hold on. We need that. We need a queer dating show, like the marriage yes. game. We need yes. that. Someone brat. Someone at brat. Make it happen. Call yes. me. But yeah, so, yeah. I, da- I date. I date men, and that was something that I would not like. The people that I I date today, I would never date at any other point in my life yeah. because I have a trans experience and. Right. People don't want to hear that. Like the trans experience yeah. is so great. It doesn't matter how binary you are. Yeah. It is so nuanced where yeah. it's like, uh, it makes sense that like, I never did anything with any guy growing up because no guy saw me as me. Right. No guy right. saw me as male. Right. Like yeah. I was, you know, like I would only be around guys that like want to be with like a girl. Right. Which, like, that was not the case. Right. And so it makes sense to me that like my entrance into the queer world was me dating girls because I was always the most masculine one and Mm -hmm. without having the language I was able to affirm my gender because we live in a world where we see guys date girls right yeah so I'm dating a girl like I I was really subconsciously felt way better than if I was with a guy that wants to be with a girl right I totally understand I think like you know what I always try to get people to understand is that like I think when they see someone transition they just assume that they want Want to transition into yeah they want to be straight yeah and it's like it's just it's so different than that and it's such a spectrum and everyone falls on it and I know I identify with parts of what you're saying like when I first came out as like a lesbian I also hated the word lesbian and always used the word gay too but um you know and, and I remember like gay men being like why are you saying that but um you know, I dated women because I was like, oh, it makes me feel like such a boy. Like, I'm the boy in the relationship, yeah, you like know? Yeah. And mm-hmm. although, like, I still don't date men, now that I'm out, I, it's, I don't need to prove it anymore. Like, to me, yeah. it's not to prove it. It's yeah. so different. Like, it's like, oh, I happen to fall in love with that girl, and that's great. But before, it was like, oh, look at me with my girlfriend. Like, see, I'm, like, such a boy, you know? Yeah. And, like, now it's, like, so different. Well, that was the thing for me, like, with... Um like love and dating was I took a really big break of like not dating anybody. And I was like, I'm good for everyone. Me me and like vibe. Okay. And with that, what I found was me dating people was a a large part of it was me trying to affirm my gender. Mm -hmm. And it was me trying to, you know, prove something to other people. Mm -hmm. And 
the moment I really was just like, oh my God, yeah, I'm trying to get validation by being like, this is who I'm with and look at how we look and now I'm getting this image mm -hmm. of, you know, so, so people can see me, so you can see me, so you can right. validate me. So like, you know, like I'm real, like this is, this is who I am. And so the moment I was able to like get a life and release that and touch grass, I, found out like I like dudes like I met a guy and I was like oh damn I was like what I was like okay what hey love is love exactly you know and it's like oh well, yeah how would I have known I'm gay in a completely different way than that was anticipated right you know and exactly like, I went through point A point B point C exactly yeah you just yeah. gotta you just gotta live life and like mm -hmm. do what feels right to you a hundred percent you know and I think like probably after your transition too when you feel so sure of yourself like like you said, you have to love yourself to love others. Like that gives you that courage to be like, if it's a guy that I happen to fall in love with, then f it. Let's just like wrap up uh, queer fashion real quick. Yeah. I know you have your merch line called is called it's called a uh, God hates miles, right? Yes, he does. And <laughs> <laughs> tell us a little bit why you chose that, and then from there we're gonna kind of wrap this up. Yeah. So God hates miles is actually like a political statement, and <laughs> hell no, yeah, it honestly, is. Honestly, uh, the Westboro Baptist Church. It just sounded like their crazy signs. Yeah. So I, was like, <laughs> I can do that. Um, and a lot of people found me uh, in like 2016. I made a lot of videos like calling the Westboro Baptist Church. Yeah. Um, go on their socials. I did a video with one of their uh, the sons of the of Fred Phelps who started mm -hmm. the the movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who his one of his uh, sons left the church when they were eighteen. Mm -hmm. Um, and like speaks uh, out against like child abuse and like does amazing with right stuff. And so I did videos with him. Uh, and so my socials at the time were all God hates Miles. Oh, and so okay, I ended gotcha. up changing that because I was like. I mean, I love it. Arlo <laughs> and I, like, we'll be real yeah, right we're now. Yeah, very like we're, that. We're <laughs> so anti-religion. And, like, I, I hate using, like, anti-anything because I we obviously believe everyone can believe and practice whatever they want. But we just feel like organized religion yeah like yeah. like like how much bad can come from it needs to be talked about more and i think yeah. people are so scared to say that well especially too like intertwining with identity i have yeah. so many friends that like struggle with their spirituality and their yeah. sexuality yeah you know and like be, being like i am spiritual like i love god mm -hmm. and i'm gay mm -hmm. so what is, what do i do and like having those conversations with their family is mm -hmm. like so much harder than i think me being like Hell isn't real. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, you know, no, and like yeah. it's harder for them to be like, this is how I feel. And you, you just had a big reaction. Do you want? No, I was just gonna say real quick. Maybe twist that a little bit. I feel like people are gonna be really mad that you just said anti-religion. I'm okay with that personally. I as you as long as you guys are because that is my truth. Like I mean, I am too, but I just feel like people are gonna be really mad at that. They can be. You know what? Well, this is this right here is the Gen Z versus millennial. Exactly. Oh, well, right this is, here. That's it. Yep. Well, because the reason that people are gonna be mad at that is because they're gonna say, well, religion isn't just Christianity and I, I, Catholic, so yeah. they're gonna be. No, like, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm talking about all. The reason I feel comfortable saying anti-religion is because of how many years religion has brought on so much war, death, no, I you agree know, persecution, with that. that I'm not saying don't practice what you believe. I'm saying I personally feel comfortable with that statement because of what it's done, especially to people like me and yeah. Miles and, and the people in this room. So I'm okay with that. People can get mad at it if they want. I'm not saying your religious is your religion is wrong or bad or that you shouldn't do it. That's just my personal belief. No, yeah, I I'm very like that as well. I just I don't know for the viewers' sake. <laughs> I felt kind of like well, you Which know, I feel like we should keep all this in. Yeah, I think that's so too. So real. Like, because it is real, real and yeah. and really what this show is about, like the why the tagline is inspired by real conversations between a trans dad and his Gen Z kid, mm -hmm. is because this is the conversations we have. And I want people to see that because there might be someone that agrees with you and there might be someone that agrees with me. Yeah. And I mean, to be honest too though, nothing will ever like be this, be the equal to how much harm organized religion has caused so they can deal with it. So yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. They said what they need to say. Okay. So I like to wrap up these interviews with two questions um, only because I think A, they're really cute. And B, I think they kind of give people who are listening like a really good idea about who you are. So the first one is, okay. if you could leave this earth with people knowing one thing about you, like what do you want to leave this earth as like kind of like your statement, your thing? 
like a saying, like a like, mantra? Or like, you know, maybe it could be like if you, someone was, you know, a musician, they'd be like, oh my God, it's this song. Yeah. You know, what's your song? What's your thing that's like, I, when I'm gone, I want people to remember Miles this way. That's, yeah, it's a very cute question. <laughs> um, you know, I think if I died today, knock on wood, y'all, yeah. I'm not saying this, <laughs> I would die knowing, and I hope what other people would know too, is I guess I'd say with the time I've had on earth right now, I know I have played a part in other people's stories in helping them love themselves. Yes. And that's all I want to do. And I think that's what you've done. That's right. the releasing that shame. I right. was taught so much shame, mm -hmm. uh, which I don't feel anymore. And right. I don't feel weird or wrong or bad for being myself. And I've met so many people through like the line of work that I do uh, that are so similar to me, but you would never, you would never see it. Like right. if you know, you look at this walking down the street right. um, and people that are so different to me that like, you know, that's why I love conversations like this and this show. Cause it's like, you could get, you know, three other guys on here that have done the same thing for their right. transition. Um, you know, we have the same pronouns, we use the same labels. We had completely different journeys to get here. Totally, right. totally. We see the world different ways. Yes. And so I think, yeah, if there's one thing I could leave, it's, it's um, helping people love themselves. Yes, and I think you are doing that. I think you continue to do that, and we love that about you, so. You. Love is love, y'all. Yeah, love <laughs> is love. Time, uh, and then Arlo, why don't you ask the very last question? It's also very cute. Do you think 10-year-old Miles would be proud of Miles today? That is so funny you said that. I saw that. that you posted that. Yeah, so <laughs> I just had like a moment and I posted like a, a, a sappy post because I have these shirts, okay, from when I was a kid. Like I like uh, school uniforms and like different like um, events I had gone to when I was like seven, eight, nine, ten. Like I like, recently like re was able to retrieve these things, mm -hmm. okay? And so I like have these tiny little baby shirts and I was thinking like, oh my God, like, you know, when I was like, when I was a little kid and I remember being 10 years old and someone made a comment like, oh, you know, one of these days you're gonna be 20. And I remember sitting back and thinking, you know, what am I gonna look like when I'm 20 years old? Mm -hmm. And I have the context of, you know, other people in the room, I aged up my features and, you know, I had the cookie cutter, you know, concept of what I could look like when I'm 20 and I didn't like it. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't know why. Right. Um, and what I said at the time was, I wanna look like the human torch. <laughs> that was my favorite superhero. He's from the Fantastic Four, which also I'm so underground. Like, who watches the Fantastic Four? I'm I used so to be cool. obsessed with that when I was little. Thank you, trans rights. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, and then no one saw that as like blatant queerness, right? right. Or like, you know, the devil. Uh, it was like the Human Torch is mostly on fire, more so yeah. than he's a man. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, and no one was like, hey, that's a little gay. Uh, but now, you know, I like had a moment yesterday where I was like. Oh, if I would have known I'd look like this, I'd be so happy. Yeah, yes. I would have been That's awesome. so happy. Absolutely. So yeah, That's ten year old awesome. Miles would be so proud of Miles now. So happy for sure. Yeah, with his bionicles <laughs> and his Beyblade. Like, yeah. Rip. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Miles, for being here. This was I got chills probably ten other times. <laughs> I I mentioned it like three times, but I think there was like ten. So you know, thank yeah. you so much. We this was amazing. This yeah. was awesome. <laughs> this is you guys like you are healing. Aww. That's like that's like oh, like if I like I'm literally lost for words. Like that is what you guys do. You guys heal, and you guys were part of my story. Like I was walk, like on Instagram being like, okay, I can be that, I can do that, and it's funny that like you identified differently at the time, right. and so did I. And right. So, like, and yeah. Now we're both here. Exactly. Like, and now I look at your top surgery on yours, and I'm like, it's so good. I want that. <laughs> it's so it's so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just congrats on like doing it, and thank you for healing this next generation. Yes, and thank thanks you for so much. That you're gonna do because I remember it's still in your bio. I went to go check your bio. I'm like, does it still say that? Because I remember back in the day, in like 2013, <laughs> yeah. like my kid is gonna change the world, yeah. and like here we are. So. Yep. <laughs> and I really, really believe it. So, Miles, why don't you plug your socials for everyone so everyone can find you and find your content and yeah. fall in love with you like we have. Amazing. Yeah, YouTube is Miles Chronicles. Everything else is at the Miles McKenna on TikTok, Instagram. I don't. I don't do Twitter. I have a Twitter. I don't, I don't do Twitter. Tweet. I'm I should Instagram. do Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I'm on Instagram and YouTube, and uh, my website's GodHateSmiles.com. 
you want some crazy merch. <laughs> and, awesome. and also, just so you guys know, the merch is sick. Like, thank you so much. I actually need to go there and buy some. Thank you so much. No, I give you. All, I'll give you everything. You oh hell yeah! <laughs> Got the plug. <laughs> and if you guys want to follow along with us, my socials across the board are at Jesse Soli, and that's where you'll find both me and Arlo. Um, they don't have their own Instagram or TikTok, so stop asking. It's all together. We are a family. We are a unit. So make sure you guys follow us if you want video episodes on the Pass Your Bedtime YouTube, YouTube channel. And if you want to listen to us, follow us on all streaming platforms. And we'll see you next week. Bye. We're out. Bye.